Hello everyone, welcome to Reactify Labs. In the last video, I talked about batch processing. Here, I'll talk about real-time processing. In the last video, I also talked about how batch processing differs from real-time processing, uh, but I did not talk about real-time processing in detail. So that I am going to do in this video. It's real-time processing or stream processing. Okay, so what is stream processing? So it's a process that deals with real time processing of continuously flowing data. Okay. Real time processing of continuously flowing data. Unlike batch processing, it focuses on analyzing and acting upon data as it is generated. It focuses on analyzing and acting upon data as it is generated so as soon as the data is generated the processing happens okay let's see what are the key components of this so key components of stream processing is first there will be data streams in stream processing data is treated as continuous unbounded streams that flow in real time from sources such as sensors social media or live events so the streams will keep coming and there will be a processing engine which will process the data. So a stream processing engine is a crucial component that enables the real time analysis and processing of data streams. Okay. So basically uh, it's clear what it does right as soon as the data is generated it's uh, processed. I have talked about uh, it in brief in the previous video in batch processing also how it works. So I'll talk about it again. The best example would be in your phone, you are watching reels. Okay. On Instagram, you are watching reels. And if this is a reel you like very much, you shared it with five people, you liked it, you commented on it, you did a lot of things on this reel. So Instagram recognizes that yes, you um, liked this content. So instead of doing this, this information, instead of sending this information for batch processing and sending you relevant reels tomorrow, what it does is it does the real time processing of those and sends you the relevant reels, reels which are similar to this reel, just the next minute. In the next minute, you will keep ask, keep seeing these reels. So you will see, let's say next two, three reels may be different from this, but after that, the reels which are similar to this will keep on coming. Okay. So this is the real life application of uh, real time processing or stream processing which we see daily okay so now let's talk about the workflow of stream processing so workflow of stream processing first step is data ingestion data ingestion Stream processing begins with the continuous ingestion of real-time data from various sources. Okay, A lot of different sources come and ingest the data. Next comes the real-time analysis. Next comes the real-time analysis. So data is analyzed in real-time, enabling immediate insights and actions based on the most recent information. And the last step would be output generation. Process data generates immediate outputs or triggers actions as part of a responsive workflow. Now let's see what are the advantages of stream processing. So real time insights first one. Because the processing happens in real time, we get the insights in real time. The best example is the Instagram real scrolling. So stream processing provides immediate insights into evolving situations, enabling quick decision making based on the latest data. Second is low latency. The approach minimizes latency, ensuring that data is processed and acted upon in near real time, 
making it suitable for time sensitive applications and next is event driven architecture Stream processing aligns well with event-driven architectures, facilitating responsiveness to dynamic events and changes. So, this is the best uh, uh, example which I can give for event-driven architecture. So, as I gave you about the reel, what happens is, if you liked it a lot, so it will show you the content. If you didn't like it, did not like it, then it will not show you similar content. Or even if similar contents are fetched, it will try to discard them and show you different content, right? So, in that way, it's event driven. So, depending on the event, event means what are you doing? What are you acting upon uh, on a similar type of reel? Depending on that, the action is taken on the further content that's being shown to you. So, that's why real time processing is also uh, uh, called, not called, it uh, aligns well with the event driven architectures. It is also a kind of like event driven architecture. Let's talk about some of the use cases of this stream processing. So first one is financial trading. These trading firms, they involve a lot of money and the stock price keeps on changing every second. Okay. So it needs real time processing of the data. We cannot, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, send it for batch processing at a later stage. So stream processing is widely used in financial trading for real time analysis of market data enabling rapid decision making in dynamic markets so whatever happens it happens rapidly it happens at that moment depending on the processing of data the traders the financial traders they can take their decisions and it is possible only because of real uh, time processing next is iot applications uh, iot applications iot means internet of things IoT applications leverage stream processing to analyze sensor data, monitor devices and respond to real-time events. Let's talk about some of the challenges in stream processing. First one is scalability. Scaling stream processing systems to handle large volumes of real-time data while maintaining low latency poses challenges that requires careful architectural considerations. So it's a challenge. It's not that it's not possible to do scaling in real time processing or stream processing. It's just that it's challenging because you have to do it in same time. So you have to cater to user demands also. And at the same time, you have to do processing of users actions also. So it con consumes a lot of resources and it is possible. Let's see. Let's see one thing. So what happens is this is users using Instagram okay and here users actions for stream processing so this is the data that the users generate and here stream processing happens so it takes a re x resources here it takes y resources here and this these are all a lot too much but let's say this is during the daytime at night after 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. Even the X decreases by a lot and Y decreases by a lot. It means it is possible that there will be some wastage of resources during off hours, right? Means it's not exactly a waste. It is possible that they can use these similar resources to allocate for batch processing. That is possible, but that requires a careful architectural considerations. We need to make it in such a way that this uh, resource allocation and deallocation can happen dynamically for real time processing, batch processing and a lot of other events that go in the background right second challenge is ordering and consistency ordering and consistency ensuring the order and consistency of processed events in a continuously flowing stream can be complex especially in distributed systems it means a lot of sources are sending the data right we need to make sure that they are in the same order or if two two things are coming from the same source we need to maintain their order not same order but we need to maintain if some events are in the some order are done in same order so it should follow that order like one two three four and if they are coming in this order here this order should be maintained 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट्स ए आई डेट समथिंग कॉल्ड लिंकड इन लेट्स लेट्स टेक द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ लिंकड इन सो वॉट हैपन्स इन लिंकड इन इज वेन यू कमेंट ऑन समथिंग और वेन यू वेन समबडी कमेंट्स ऑन यूर पोस्ट यू कैन सी देयर कमेंट्स एंड यू हैव अ फिल्टर फॉर मोस्ट रिसेंट सो दिस ऑर्डरिंग इज इम्पॉर्टेंट दिस मोस्ट रिसेंट विल टेल यू द ऑर्डर ऑफ द कमेंट्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन द ऑर्डर इन विच दे हैड अराइव्ड राइट and if this order is messed up let's say somebody has commented something then you replied on something and then somebody else commented something this order should be maintained and for maintaining this order we need to do some of the um, we need to handle it in a better way we need to do some of the processing or some of the tweakings or some of the uh, architectural considerations for this one to ensure the ordering and consistency in stream processing so yep uh, we have already talked about the difference between stream processing and batch processing in previous video let's talk about it in uh, this video also quickly so stream processing excels in real time scenarios providing immediate insights and actions making it suitable for applications with low latency requirements so real time processing is good for applications which have low latency requirements whereas for batch processing the contrast is that contrasting with batch processing stream processing handles data on the fly without the need for predefined batches making it ideal for scenarios where data is continuously generated so if the data is continuously generated and it has a low latency requirement it needs to be processed immediately so that further decision making can be based on the newly available information so for that stream processing is very good as opposed to batch processing which does these uh, same things in offload hours okay now let's talk about some of the real world examples in which stream processing is used first one is fraud detection so stream processing plays a very important role in financial systems particularly in fraud detection real time analysis of transaction data allows systems to promptly identify and respond to suspicious activities preventing potential financial losses by continuously monitoring transaction patterns and anomalies in real time stream processing can generate immediate results automated responses such as blocking transactions or triggering additional authentication measures contribute to proactive fraud prevention so basically what stream processing does is it continuously uh, keeps on processing data to identify if there is an anomaly in the um, way the data is being generated if it finds an anomaly it will um, flag it as a potential fraud and then further processing can be done by a human on it okay next is social media analytics the instagram example that i just gave you so that was one example but a lot of things are uh, possible in the social media domain so social media analytics social media platforms leverage stream processing to gain immediate insights into user interactions trending topics and sentiments real time analysis enables platforms to understand user behavior and preferences promptly stream processing enables timely responses on social media platforms ranging from content recommendations to targeted advertisements content recommendations that real example i gave you and next is targeted advertisements it means depending on what you are liking what kind of content you are liking you will see targeted ads for example let's say you see a lot of travel related content then what happens is the ads that you will see will be of the travel companies or travel groups so these are the ads that you will get so that's why social media analytics uh, real is that's the role that stream processing plays in social media analytics by analyzing ongoing interactions platforms can dynamically adjust their content delivery strategies to enhance user engagement it's the same thing that i told you about the um, reels example which i gave you just now okay now let's talk about some of the evolving trends in stream processing just uh, like i talked about in batch processing evolving trends so a significant trend is the integration of stream processing with machine learning algorithms this combination facilitates real time predictions based on evolving data streams 
Applications range from predicting user preferences to identifying emerging trends. So first one is obviously integration with machine learning. Integration with machine learning. So what, what in this? Real time predictions. Again, similar to the Instagram example. Second is adaptive learning. So in real time predictions, it's the integration of stream processing with machine learning algorithms. This combination facilitates real time predictions based on evolving data streams. And uh, the applications will be user preferences, uh, what are the targeted ads, emerging trends, or different kinds of things. In adaptive learning, the integration allows for adaptive learning models that continuously evolve based on the dynamic nature of incoming data. This adaptability enhances the system's ability to respond to changing patterns and behaviors in real time. So these are all come under the same example of the reels that I gave you. Depending on the kind of reel that you engage with a lot, it makes real time predictions, right? It makes adaptive learning. So if you like it, it will show you similar content. If you don't like it, it will not show you similar content. It will try to do something else. So that's adaptive learning. Okay. Let's say you like it moderately. So it will try to show you the same content intermittently. Okay. And it will try to give you uh, different types of contents. Let's say you disliked every content. So every time you dislike one content, it will try to not show you that content and try to find a new content which you might like. So this is adaptive learning also. Okay. So both real time predictions and adaptive learning go hand in hand. Next is edge computing. Second is edge computing. So in this first one is reducing latency. Reducing latency with edge computing. So stream processing is increasingly integrated with edge computing where data is analyzed closer to the source or at the network's edge. This approach minimizes latency, addressing the need for quick responses in time sensitive applications and bandwidth efficiency. So analyzing data at the edge reduces the need for extensive data transfers to centralized servers, making stream processing more bandwidth efficient. This trend aligns with the broader paradigm of edge computing, emphasizing efficient and localized data processing architecture. So what is edge computing? Edge computing, first let's talk about what is edge. Edge is any device which you are using. Let's say you are using a tablet or a mobile phone or a laptop. These are all are considered as edge. So processing happens on the edge instead of sending it to the server, which will take a lot of round trip time and then server like you send the data to server and then server processes it and then sends it back to you. So this takes a lot of time. So instead just do the uh, stream processing on the edge. So it reduces latency, right? Because it's doing on the same system and bandwidth efficiency because you don't have to send data back and forth with the server. Okay. So um, that's it. I don't think anything else is left here to talk about. So now I hope it uh, clears the stream processing for you and how stream processing uh, is different from batch processing and what role stream processing plays in our daily life. What um, are the use cases where stream processing is used? What are the advantages of using stream processing? Where we should use stream processing and where we should use batch processing? Um, what are the components of stream processing? Uh, and what are the uh, real life use cases and the evolving trends in stream processing? Okay. So, yes, with this, I conclude this video. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.